With football, sport in general, and the world at large coming to a grinding halt, UEFA announced on March 17th, 2020 that Euro 2020 will be postponed by 12 months. Hey everyone, I'm Adrian from Rabona TV, and it's great to be speaking to you once again in this quick video. We'll still have updates and videos coming at you on Rabona TV a couple of times per week, but there's definitely going to be a slower drip of content. Now, I've also started a second channel linked in the description for non-football stuff to take your mind off of things and hopefully have a laugh. But all right, let's get to the announcement. It's a big one, but it starts with... UEFA today announced the postponement of its flagship national team competition, UEFA Euro 2020, due to be played in June and July this year. The health of all those involved in the game is the priority, as well as to avoid placing any unnecessary pressure on national public services involved in staging matches. The move will help all domestic competitions currently on hold due to the COVID-19 emergency to be completed. I think this was one of the worst kept secrets in the news. On the 16th, 24 hours prior, The Athletic's David Ornstein wrote how UEFA were demanding their member associations to pay up 300 million euros in order to push the tournament down the road by 12 months. Now, we don't know what dealings were made between the member associations and UEFA behind closed doors as far as financials go, but in the announcement from today, UEFA president Alexander Seferin said, quote, it was important that, as the governing body of European football, UEFA led the process and made the biggest sacrifice. Moving Euro 2020 comes at a huge cost for UEFA, but we will do our best to ensure that the vital funding for grassroots, women's football, and the development of the game in our 55 countries is not affected. Purpose over profit has been our guiding principle in taking this decision for the good of European football as a whole. The tournament will now overlap with the women's Euro 2020. So yeah, I'm not sure if the financial demands that were originally reported did in fact end up being asked for or not, but if they did not demand that of their member associations, then it is indeed an altruistic move by UEFA. Not like they're light on cash at all. <laughs> they also announced that all tickets purchased for the 2020 edition will be valid for the tournament next summer, but that anyone who purchased tickets and cannot make it next summer will also receive a full refund, so you don't need to worry if you fell into that category. Now, as mentioned by UEFA, the priority had to go to finishing the current seasons, as the repercussions of just using the standings as they are now could bring on an absolute shitstorm, for lack of a more eloquent word, and legal issues. How would the teams that had a chance of escaping relegation feel if they were sent down? Alternatively, you could say nobody will be relegated, but then what do you say to the teams that are leading the second divisions around the world as they could not be promoted in that case? Well, actually in Germany, there was some discussion of not relegating anyone and simply adding the teams from the second division that are currently in promotion places to the Bundesliga for next season, but that hasn't been confirmed. When it looks like with the moving of Euro 2020, that probably won't be necessary. All of this would have been to ensure that Euro 2020 goes ahead, but as I said, it's too much of a headache, so this summer will be spent on sorting out club football ahead of the 2020-2021 season. In fact, they didn't even have all the final competitors for Euro 2020 as the playoffs for those final places were to be played this month. But as UEFA said today, the UEFA Euro 2020 playoff matches and international friendlies scheduled for the end of March will now be played in the international window at the start of June, subject to a review of the situation. Personally, something tells me that those may be kicked further down the line in order to avoid some fixture congestion towards the tail end of the season and in the summer. They're going to be playing the summer. And given that the tournament has been moved to next summer, they have time to fit in those playoffs somewhere else. Now, not only does this forced break have an effect on Euro 2020, but UEFA's other competitions as well. In regards to the Champions League and Europa League, UEFA has started a working group to tackle the incoming fixture pileup and to decide where they can fit in their flagship club tournaments. But it wasn't just Euro 2020 that was postponed, as CONMEBOL, the governing body for football in the South American region, also postponed the 2020 edition of Copa America. Why is this important? Well, given the amount of South Americans that play in Europe, it was a necessary combined effort from the two associations. As Seferin said, I would also like to thank Alejandro Dominguez and Conmebol, who have agreed to move Conmebol's 2020 Copa America in order to follow the recommendations issued by the international public health organizations to enact extreme measures and as a result of Euro 2020 being postponed. This means that clubs and leagues in Europe will have as little disruption as possible in the 
availability of their players. These joint efforts, and especially this coordinated and responsible decision, are deeply appreciated by the whole European football community. I would like to thank FIFA and its president, Gianni Infantino, who has indicated it will do whatever is required to make this new calendar work. In the face of this crisis, football has shown its best side with openness, solidarity, and tolerance. Hello, Editor Adrian here. I had to sub in because UEFA released another statement later in the day, except instead of focusing on Euro 2020 again, this time they focus more on what the club competitions are going to do. So let's go over that quickly as well, just so you have all the information in one package. So in regards to the club competitions, a commitment to complete all domestic and European club competitions by the end of the current sporting season, i.e. 30th of June 2020 at the latest, should the situation improve and resuming playing be appropriate and prudent enough? Possible limitations or drops of current exclusive calendar slots potentially resulting in the scheduling of domestic league matches in midweek and scheduling of UEFA club competitions matches on weekends. And finally, possible adaptations of the 2020-21 UEFA Champions League and UEFA Europa League qualifying rounds in case of late completion of the 2019-20 sporting season, i.e. after 30th of June 2020. So nothing is finalized as yet again, it's all down to what the situation is with the virus, if it's still spreading, if they have it under control, etc. But this is at least the roadmap that they're going to try to follow for now. Okay, back to other Adrian. So that's where we're at. As Seferin said, in the coming weeks, as the global health situation evolves, we will start to have a clearer picture as to where everything will fit in. There's of course a chance that it escalates to the point where some extreme measures may need to be made in order to conclude the current season. Measures that are going to cause a lot of clubs to be unhappy. But unfortunately, a pandemic is hard to account for, and if the governments of countries don't take it seriously enough, early enough, then the fallout of their indecision permeates all aspects of life. Business, entertainment, everything, and football falls into that as well. Uh-oh, YouTube, I said the naughty words, pandemic and COVID-19. Anyways, guys, hang in there. It's an extremely bizarre year. I was really looking forward to Euro 2020, but of course, people's health takes priority. But I thank you so much for watching. That's it for now. However, I'll have another video for you later this week. I'm Adrian, I love you, and stay healthy. Ciao.